apologize for not having a stream video on Thursday. Um, I was having issues, um, and it turns out it was my cameras that were the issues. So we've got everything fixed. Uh, hopefully we've got the lag fixed. We've got the um, stream fixed. I think we've got everything. So in the meantime, uh, Raina Tomi and Digital Bath, I don't know if I've thanked you. Thank you very much for your follows. I appreciate them. And today I'm going to continue on with the GameCube quilt. So if you haven't checked out the previous streams, um, this is what I managed to do for the center logo. And I also got in the last stream all of my applique work done. So now today I am going to get it all assembled together. So step number one, let me make sure first that, whoops, up, that I can see my stats just to make sure that the health is good at the stream. Yep, everything looks good on my end. Wonderful. Okay, so step number one. Uh, before I can attach this to the logo, I need to sew the sides of the logo on. So I need to sew here and here. And then once I get those on, then I can attach the bottom and the top. And I've already figured all of my math out. So I need a strip. 12 inches, well, I need two strips, 12 inches by 30 and a quarter inches. So the um, fabric that I'm using is 42 inches wide. So I'm going to cut a 12 inch strip and then actually no. I'm going to cut two 12 inch strips and then cut it down to the 30 and a quarter. Yep, I'll do that. All right, so so I'm gonna cut two 12 inch strips from here. So here's the first one. In fact, I'm going to do it the easy way. And cut them both at the same time. Make sure that's all straight. So I'm cutting it at 12. And then I'm cutting it 24. And set this aside temporarily. Let me put it right there. And now I need to cut this to 30 and a quarter. So 30 and a quarter divided by two. Uh, that would be 15 and an eighth. So. Okay, let me cut off the end. Oops, I need to do it the other way. I don't want two smaller pieces, I want one big piece. And then I'll have two pieces of black that I can use later on. So 15 and an eighth. There we are. So here's one. And of course, I need to iron this out before I do anything. And of course, the kitty cat's on the ironing board. Mike. All right, go off. Come here. I know, you're a good kitty cat. There 
this one. So I'm cutting this the same because that was the piece on the left. Here's the piece on the right. So 15 and an 8. pop this open so I can see the stream health while I'm streaming. Great. Harley, honey. I know the kitty cat's teasing you. I know she's a big tease. All right, so I am adding on the strips the right and to the left. Yeah. yeah, you notice how I cut this strip exact. So what I'm doing right now is I'm squaring my piece. I'm making sure that the right and the left and the top and the bottom are going to be the size that I want them. Oh, and I just realized I cut them 12, and I forgot to take in the account the um, quarter inch seam. That's okay. I'm just going to adjust my figures. So, the half inch, half inch is going to be 49 and a half wide. So, I know that's what I'm going to do right here. Okay, I'm fine with that. So I'm lining it up on the right and the left, I'm pinning it because it squares up my quilt and it makes sure that when I add on the other end that it's going to be the same exact length. I'm going to make sure any time that there's a seam under here that I'm securing it. Okay. 
I had a few in for extra measure. Never have too many pins. Now you notice this one had got a, a bunch of extra fabric on here. That may mean that the other one was cut a little wider. Or this one was cut a little shorter. So fabric can stretch and move. So I'm going to stretch it and smooth it so it's going to equal up the other side. So in the middle. Each of the seams. And some extra pins for good measure. Now, this is one of those do as I say, not what I do moments, because I sew over my pins. It's a bad habit, but I would rather pay the extra cost for the machine damage than not have my seams perfect, because it does damage your machine whenever you hit a pin. Whenever I'm sewing, I'm not pushing it into the machine. I'm actually like, guiding it and making sure it's a perfect quarter inch. And then on the outside, I'm just pulling and guiding it through. If I have time today, I'm scheduled to stream at 5 o'clock. If I have time, I'm going to cut out the pieces for the Final Fantasy quilt. Because I did hear back from the gentleman that um, commissioned it. And he's not sure of which fabric he wants to use. So, Tuesday, I am doing a, um, a pinning at the family center that I always do my stuff at. And I'm going to cut out the pieces for the Final Fantasy quilt and bring a bunch of the fabric with me and lay them out. And then that way he can get a better idea of how it's going to look if, for whichever fabric he chooses. Now for this, it doesn't make a difference which way I iron these seams because my top and my bottom are a single piece. So I'm just going to iron them away from my quilt because that is going to be the easiest way to do it. And I also realized as I was getting ready to go live that I forgot to upload Tuesdays and Wednesdays videos. 
So I apologize. As soon as I'm done streaming today, I'll get those uploaded, and then I'll get today's uploaded by tomorrow. What I'm doing here is I have some threads that are starting to peek through from the back. So all I'm doing is pulling them and they come right out. And then as you see me doing all this, this is just making sure that there is no cat or dog hair in the top as I go, because I do not want any cat hair or dog hair to get sewn into this quilt. And I don't want any dander in there because I do not know if the person who commissioned it is allergic to any kind of animals. Plus it's always just to be better to err on the side of caution. Okay, so I've got my entire quilt done. This should be 49 and a half inches, if I did my math correctly. So 49 and a half divided by two, 39, no, 29. Twenty-seven. Oh, I can't do math off the that fast. Forty-nine divided by two. Yeah, twenty-four and three quarters. So twenty-four and three quarters. Fantastic. Okay. So I want to cut my pieces forty-nine and a half. Oh, you know I should have done. I should have added on this piece here and then the side pieces. Oh, that's okay. I just would I'm gonna use some of my fabric up. All right, so do I have, this is the 50 inches that I did on the bottom. Do I need to make this 11 inches? No, not long enough. So these are all my long pieces of black scrap that I'll use for later on for other quilts. So I now need to, you know what, let me just get the bottom pinned on and then I will cut the top and get that pinned on just so I can move this out of the way. Now this, the bottom should be a little bit bigger than the top. I purposely cut it a little extra wide in order to make sure that it would be perfectly centered. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to fold my piece in half and I'm going to iron this half part right here so I have a little bit of a seam. I have an indentation so I can see exactly where the half part of my quilt is. Sorry, I just, on my feed, it looked like it was a little behind, so I just want to make sure that I update it. There we go. Fantastic. Sorry. Okay, so as I was saying, this right here is my exact middle, and I already know that this right here is my exact middle. And whenever I did it, this is a quarter inch. So it'll, should sew right along there. So I'm lining this right there. So that is my middle. Now I'm gonna flip this over because whenever I sew it, I want to see this seam right here 
because it's important as I get here that I've hit this exactly or else it's not going to be a perfect point. Now, again, I did say that I cut my larger piece with my applique lettering a little bigger. I'm going to take this pin out, just put it on that side. So I'm going to smooth this out just to make sure that my fabrics are perfectly straight. There's no puckers, there's no problems anywhere. that side, hold this over and shift it so I can work on the other side. And I, like I said before, I'm working out from the middle just to make sure everything is smooth. And then I will trim this piece that I have sewn together. Like and again, always pin those seams because you don't want the seam to be flipping whenever you sew it. That side's done, so now I want to do the other side. So I'm just going to move this up a little bit just to make it easier and then set this aside so I can cut it. So let me grab my black again. Now, this time. I need it 11 inches and I'm going to do 50 inches. Just make sure that it's a little bit big just to make sure it covers the entire thing. Just like I'm doing the bottom. Because I can't have an exact cut because my cutting mat only goes to 36 inches. So I'm going to have to move it in order to adjust it. So there's no way to get an exact cut on it. So I'll cut it a little bit and then trim it off. Okay, so I'm cutting it 50. So here is 25. Out again. So here's my 50 mark. All right, and I should be done with the black. All right, so I've got my, it's 50 wide and it needs to be 11 inches tall. And 
of actually going to cut it 11 and a half in order to accommodate for the uh, quarter inch seam allowance. see those half marks. You know, they say measure twice, cut once. That's why I was looking what I was doing a couple of times before I actually cut it. Okay, so here's my piece that I am adding to the top of my quilt. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to iron it out. I'm going to roll it, making sure there's no hairs, standard. And then I'm going to fold this in half to find my center. This is going to happen when I saw the pat on the ironing board. Fortunately, she sheds. <laughs> right. It's a quiet shop today. Yet, so folding it in half, finding the center. my center and then I'm going to flip it again because again I want to make sure that when I cut it I'm cutting it right along the seam to make sure that I have a perfect point so I don't want to cut my point off or sew my point off All right, let's sew my ends. 
Oh, I don't know if I've mentioned it before. This is a double size quilt. So it is going to fit a double size bed when it's done. And what I'm doing with my scrap piece of fabric is a technique called chaining, where I constantly have a piece of fabric in, and it locks the fabric at the end, so I don't have some loose thread. Also more efficient and faster to so just constantly sew than it is to stop and cut your threads. notice I'm fixing my fabric as I go. Your fabric is always going to want to move and slip, and so I'm constantly fixing it as I go. I'm just going to check that seam just to make sure. Okay, I think. No, it's fine. I was afraid I did it too much. So I was just double checking it. And of course I knocked my thread. There we go. I'm just knocking everything off. And again, with the top and the bottom, it does not make a difference which way you iron these seams. Although, I'm thinking because of this seam right here, I'm going to change it and flip it around the other way. 
and iron it away from my center instead of towards my center like I was planning originally. show you on the camera in a moment. I'm very happy with this side. This point is good. It's not my favorite, but it's good. It, it is a point. Not perfect, but it's one of those three foot roll ones. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Um, a tr something that Jenny Lyons taught me. Uh, whenever you're making something, if you're not happy with it, take a, take three. Put your, your, about three feet of space between you and what you're working on and take another look. If you can't see the problem, then no one else is ever going to see the problem and you're being too critical on yourself. The only time they will see it is if you point it out to them. Now I'm just trimming my edges. I'm lining it up along the bottom and I'm lining it up this way. The reason why I'm folding it is it is a lot easier to trim these edges with a single trim. So I'm taking the bottom and I'm folding it in half and I'm making sure it's a perfect straight line. And that way my cut will be straight. Straight. Just making sure I'm perfectly happy with it before I cut it. There we are. Okay, that side is done to the other side. Oh, 
again, I'm moving this, lining it up. Lining it up along the bottom. Now, there's no way what I'm doing is going to be an exact science and have an exact cut. So, oops, forgot one. The next step, there that one. The next step is going with the, sorry, my husband walked downstairs and I lost my train of thought, uh, with the borders. So with the borders, I'm going to cut them in a way to make sure that the entire quilt is going to get lined up perfectly so it's the same width at the top and the bottom and the same length on the left and the right So, my main quilt is finished. Of course, it's a double size, so I'm going to have to show it to you in pieces. And then, of course, the bottom, and it's hard to show you on the camera, but I can show you at least this part of it. And of course that's going to get cut off there because um, it's a larger quilt. So the next steps, of course, is the, like I said, the borders. I sat down earlier and I figured out all my math for the borders. This borders, this quilt's going to have three borders. It's going to have a light purple, a medium purple, and a dark purple. The same purples that are inside the actual logo. So I'm just going to move that over for the moment. And I'm going to, oh, you know what? I did the math for the size, but I didn't do the math of how many pieces I need to cut. Okay, so my quilt is it is 48, 49 inches. That's pretty close because I wanted it to be 50. So it's 49 inches. Yeah, okay, so I'll do my original 50 by 70, so that'll give me enough. Okay, so my first border is gonna be a quarter and a half. Um, I need to have two pieces here. So that's going to be two, four, and I can do, piece and a half is not, yeah, so piece and a half is gonna be 60 inches. So four, five, six, so seven strips of the light purple and a quarter and a half. The medium. Now what I have to do is add on to my sides. So this is now going to be 52 and a half because I have a quarter inch here, 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 a one and a quarter inch. Um, and this is going to be uh 70 plus 70, 72 and a half same thing i can use the same exact step as long as this is not 60 and this is not 80 then i'm perfectly fine again with seven strips now the next one this is a two and a half so two and a half two and a half two and a half two and a half um so that is going to be five inches on that so 57 and a half by Five and a half, so 70, yeah, so five inches, so 77 and a half. Okay, again, it's still under the 60, under the 80, so the last one, I'm going to do seven strips of each, which is perfectly fine. Now, my last one's five inches, so my finished quilt is going to be 87 and a half inches by, oops, sorry, um, 
10 inches, so it's going to be 67 and a half inches by 87 and a half inches, which is a standard double size quilt for all the math. Okay, so I need to now cut seven strips of each color. And then I can move it out of the way. Okay. Set that over there, out of the way. I'm not going to need my calculator. Oops. I have a bend in my fabric. Sometimes the fabric will do that, even if it's, you've washed it, if you've gotten it from the manufacturer, it doesn't make a difference. Sometimes you'll notice little folds like that. We just need to iron it back out again. Now, in this case, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. I just want to make sure that there's no folds in there for the areas that I'm cutting. So if I get this far, I'll be ironing it before I cut. easier to cut it. Yeah, I'll just do it the long way. I was going to fold it over and cut it the short way the way I did before, but I have enough room here. is one and a quarter plus the two quarter inch seams will add a half. I'm going to cut it one and three quarters. So I'm making seven strips of one and three quarters. Thank you. 
and seven. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I am done with this fabric for this quilt. I set them right here. Next, the medium purple. I need seven strips of two and a half plus the quarter inch seams. I need seven strips of three. here for the first cut is I'm just making sure everything's lined up and the edge of my fabric is straight before I actually start cutting it. Said I'm doing three inches. Now, whenever I designed the sizes of this quilt, I made sure that each of the borders was in direct relation to the border before it. So the first border, well, actually the middle border, the two and a half inch border, is actually the size of the thin part of the GameCube logo. So I use that as my master in the middle, and then the first border of the light purple is half of it, and the last border in the dark purple is double it, so that the borders are in relation to the quilt itself and in their relation to each other. calculations like that I always calculate what my finished size is going to be and then I add on the seam allowance whenever I'm cutting. That's just something I do. A lot of people factor the seam allowance into their calculations when they're doing it. Which I really should do because sometimes I forget about it and I have to do it over. But, for some reason, I always just find it easier to work with finished numbers. There we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm done with this fabric. Last but not least, oh, it's already cut nicely. Uh, these are going to be five inches, so I don't have to trim this one because I've already trimmed it before, and it still looks good. So with the quarter inch seam allowance, I'm cutting these five and a half. Yeah, that looks good.
makes this four. this map so much. Such a pretty purple. Oops. And that's why I pull the way I do, just to make sure it cut through all the way. with this one. Alright, so my borders are all cut out. Now, hmm, where do I want to set them? I'm going to set them over here for now. Just to get them up out of the way. I shouldn't need my long one anymore. That there, I'll just use the short one. Okay, uh, now I need to create the, so the actual borders together to put onto the quilt. So this is for my top, I'm sorry, my left, my right, my top and my bottom. Now I do need to cut one of these pieces in half and sew it to the other two. I sew them together at an angle instead of straight on because it makes it a tighter bond, um, makes it a tighter stitch between them. So there is my left and my right. Now I'm going to do the left and right and then the top and the bottom. Sew these first because I'm going to be sewing them onto the quilt first.
okay, and then so these. And I want to trim these edges. Right, and then I need to iron these open. And depending upon the quilt, the borders could be just as important as the quilt itself. In fact, there's a lot of quilts where the focus is on the borders and not the quilt. In this case, I just wanted to finish it off. I wanted to make it look nice. So I am going to show you the proper way of doing it, which is important because sometimes I do the cheater way. So I need to measure each side and get an exact measurement. This side is 20 and 3 quarters times 4. Okay, 83. Well, that's a lot longer than I thought it was. It's supposed to only be 70. Yeah, it's definitely too long. All right, what did I do? Let's fix this before I move on. Okay, should have been 30, 30, and 10. 30. No, it's a little more than 30, but that's okay. Oh, the top is 23. How did I do that one? I cut that way wrong. Okay. No, let me trim the top. No wonder it's so long. I thought that was strange when I initially did it. And this is why it's important to triple check all work. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go from this way. Okay, I'm going 
to pin this here because this is exactly where my seams meet. So I know that is perfectly folded. And everything else will get folded from there. Oh, I know what I did. When I made the cut for the fabric, I forgot to divide it in two. Yep. And I'm lining the seam up on the 10. Sure, it's straight, and then I'll just cut it on the 20. And there's my 10 inches. So it should be 70 inches long now. And extra fabric to use for another project. That's more like it. Yeah, much better. Okay. Now let's measure everything. Okay, so this side is 17 and a half times four. That's exactly 70 inches. Nice. Okay, so let's see what this side is. Now what I'm doing is I'm measuring both sides just to make sure that they are correct, number one. Number two, if they're a little off, that's okay. But then I fix them. Look at that, 17 and a half, perfect. All right, so they're both exactly 70 inches. So what I wanna do now is cut these 70 inches. So that's going to be my middle. Oops, I have some seams in here I need to iron out. There we go. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm lining this up and I have it folded in half and then I will cut it at the 35 inch mark to make it 70 inches exactly. There we go, extras in the scrap bin, there's one. Now the next two set of borders, I'm going to do the cheater way. I'm just doing it this way so you can see the way it's supposed to be done.
Yep. Yep. Scraps and scrap in. Okay, now my left and my right. out where my center is. So this part right here should be at the 35 inches. So apply the repeat. Do it to the other side. Yeah, chat's still super quiet today. Okay, and that's my half. All right, let's add on the first border. Okay, so this right here is my half. And this right here is my half. So I line my half to my half, pin it in place. There we go. Now, let's work just like I did before. I'm going to work on each side at a time. So first thing I want to do is bring it all the way to the end. And this is how you square the quilt up. Because these strips are exactly 70, and that's how big I want my quilt. So then now, stretch, remove the fabric, so that I can add this border. Let's go halfway. Again, never have too many pins. Normally, whenever I do the proper way of adding the borders on, sometimes I'll do the cheater way for the next set of borders. Sometimes I'll do the proper way throughout the entire thing. It honestly depends upon who's going to be quilting it. If you are having a professional quilter quilt it on a long arm machine, you have to do the borders the proper way or else the machine, or the quilt, won't lay on the machine properly in order to quilt it. In this case, for this quilt, I'm going to do it myself. So it's not going to be put on a long arm, it's just going to be put through my regular industrial sewing machine. There we go. Okay, half of it's done. Now the other side. It's, oh, which 
way did I put the C? Yeah. I just want to have them facing the same direction. Kind of hair in there. That's one of the reasons why I like to pull my hair up while I'm quilting. Is I have issues with it getting into stuff. Especially the sewing machine. It's quite annoying. So I've got the left and right. <sighs> now I get to sew them on. thread up top is starting to get low so I'm just keeping an eye on it just to make sure other side.
and the seams don't make a difference which way you iron them. So I'm just going to iron them straight out from the center. It's easier that way. This is the difficult part because it is so big, struggling with it, get it all ironed. There we are. The first two sides are done. So now the left and right's done. Now I have to do the top and the bottom. So I'm going to do it the same way. I did the other ones. So let's measure it's top and bottom. It is 52 inches exactly. And 52 inches exactly. Nice. Half. And then the half. Okay, there's the half and half. Half mark. Now I 
I forgot. Oh, that was my half mark, so I could just take that and divide that by two. It was 52. That's right. So, 52 divided by 2 is 26. And I'm just going to finger press this one. You don't have to iron it every time to find the half mark. Finger pressing is fine. Okay. And there's 26. Okay, and then there's scrap. I don't know why I'm shedding today. right in the middle. Okay, seams get in first. Fabric keeps wanting to lift up and not be straight for my pinning. See, and by doing it this way, the proper way of doing the borders, I know at this point my, um, my quilt is exactly the same size top and bottom, as, and the left and the right is the same. Also, if you want to enter any quilts into competitions, you should do the borders the correct way. Because something they look at in competitions is, is the top and bottom equal, is the left and right equal. Go to the other side. I just took the pins and smacked them. I'll clean them up in a bit. Some more lint I picked up. I need to decide what color I want to quilt this. Thinking maybe a light gray, maybe or silver. I want to do purple because I don't want to see it too much inside the black.
the bottom pin. <sighs> now when I do the next round of borders, it's important that my second and my third borders are put on the exact same order that I did this first border. So I put my left and my right on, and then I put my top and my bottom on. So the next set of borders, I have to put on the left and the right, and then the top and the bottom. If you switch it, and if I did the top and the bottom first, and then left and right, it would a little weird. By doing the same order, the quilt looks more uniform and more symbiotic. Still good on thread. And the bobbin's a little less than half. If you're new to sewing or quilting and you're looking for a starter machine, the number one thing that I recommend is to make sure it has a drop-in bobbin. The first sewing machine that I got had a front-loading bobbin, and I just couldn't figure that thing out. It was just a pain. And then I got my drop-in bobbin, and it just, it was amazing. I couldn't believe how easy it was. Are. All right, first set of borders is done. Now for the second set. Now I'm going to start doing it the cheater way now, just to save time and to speed it up a little bit. Remember with the cheater way, if you are having someone uh, quilted on a long arm, if you're going to enter into a competition, you cannot do it the cheater way. You have to do it the way that I just showed for every single border. I am not getting this quilted on a long arm, and I'm not entering it into a competition. So for speed and efficiency, because I have 10 other quilts that I have to start getting work, I have to get working on. Not counting.
doing my secret project, I am going to do it this way. Now I'm still putting them together the same exact way. It's going to take the same amount of time. I'm not saving any time by putting it together differently. And my seams are going to be stronger by having them on an angle than if I just would have sewn them together. the sides. I want to do those second. Because I have to do the left and the right first. So I want to sew those first. I've noticed when I've streamed on the weekends during the day, chat's really quiet. This all is still the same. Hit it for myself. Right. Now, here comes the difference between the way I did the first set of borders, the second set with cheater way. Still doing the left and right first, except I'm not finding centers and I'm not measuring anything. I'm going to do it completely based off of this. Um, I want that 
I want it to look like it's continuing on. That's my starter mark. And then let's make sure I have enough fabric to the left and enough fabric to the right. I do. And then I will trim it whenever I sew it. So I'm going to sew it first and then I'm going to trim it up. Now, theoretically, it still should be the same top, bottom, left and right, because I did that first border the correct way. So the second and third should theoretically just follow along. Theoretically. The only way to guarantee that it is, is to do it the way you're supposed to. And I don't. Yep. Scrap. And I still will need my pencil for the next set of borders. Now I don't have to make sure that the seams here line up, but for aesthetic reasons, I like it. I think this piece is too small to save as a scrap. All right, now the other side. Same thing. I'm going to find my seam. And you can see why I call it the cheater way, because it moves a lot faster than that first set of borders. And it still looks the same. So you're not taking anything away from the quilt itself. Alright, let's sew the second set of borders on. So I'm doing the left and right first.
it's important that I'm going to keep an eye on that spool of thread. I may finish the spool as I finish the side of the uh, border. Yeah, I did. Nice. Look at that. That's all the thread I had left. Fantastic. All right, let's grab another one. There we go. It doesn't want to get threaded. What I just did, and I didn't even touch it, and I was sewing. Whenever I teach uh, kids' classes, that's the first thing that I teach them, is that the machine will move the fabric by itself. You don't have to do anything with the fabric. You don't have to push it. You don't have to pull it. You don't have to do anything but guide it that it's going to go where you want it to go. All right. Okay, let's iron it. I do want a purple thread. I don't know, maybe I may just ask Vinny what color he wants.
right. Now, because the second border, I did it the cheater way, it doesn't line up perfectly. So I now have to trim them. So you trim it either before you put it on or after you put it on. But either way, you don't want that extra fabric hanging out there. All four trimmed. Now let's put the top and the bottom on. I've been so busy, I haven't even started figuring out the pieces for the uh, Zelda crest yet. My goal is that I can get to it this week. Alright, let's sew these seams, uh, iron these seams open. Okay, and then same thing. Oh, I finally have someone in chat. Hi, Amber, how are you? You know, I have been streaming. I know there's a bunch of people watching. I've been streaming now for two hours, and you're the first person to actually say something in chat. It's been very quiet. It's been very strange. All right, so here's my scene right there. So, let's see if I line it up, if I have enough fabric, I do. Now the next one may not have enough fabric, but I've got enough fabric for this one. Seriously, it's been weird. It's been super, super quiet. So the GameCube quilts will be finished today. I've got three borders. The first border I put on was a inch and a quarter thick. This border is two and a half inches thick. And then the final border is going to be five inches thick. So they're all in proportion to each other. And the two and a half inches. Oh, hi, Celestial Witch. How are you? So then the, the two and a half inch one is actually the same width as the black in the center of the GameCube quilt. And if I have time, if I finish this entire quilt and I have time before I'm supposed to stop streaming, I've got um, finally got an answer from the gentleman who commissioned the Final Fantasy quilt. He still hasn't decided what color he wants for the sashing, and he wants to know if I can lay it all out and show him the different color options. So I need to trim up all the blocks so that when I go to pin everything on Tuesday, I can do that for him. So if I have time, you'll get to see all of the Final Fantasy blocks. Oops, the 
this way. able to do yes I am there we are so how have you been for the past couple of days Amber anything new See, that's my life too. Nothing exciting like always. It's funny, I saw a friend that I haven't seen for a few months. I went over to her house last night and I'm like, I haven't been to your house since Pokemon Go started. Because there's a gym next to your house and I would have known this. So that's how long it's been since I've been to her house. So she asked, so what's new? I'm like, um, quilting? Traveling? Same old, same old. There we go. Oh, is that big? Yeah, it's big enough for scrap. All right. Second set of borders is almost done. Yes, I am very happy with what I do for a living. When you painted or made candles, did you just always do it for yourself, gifts, or did you actually uh, charge money for anything? Oops, I'm out of bobbin thread. Yep. So I love that when that happens. Let's do that one. Yeah, see, it's really hard for handmade to make and sell them and make a living at it. It's, you have to pay yourself, but at the same time, you have to find someone that's willing to pay that. Because if you don't charge the appropriate price and pay yourself, there's no way you can do a living off of it. Um, competition for robotics is. Oh, did you know there's a, a couple of Twitch channels? 
We discovered that this morning. There's Twitch channels that show all those robotics competitions. That was pretty awesome. So the next one that uh, Jordan's going to be in is in two weeks. I'll make sure I put the link up someplace. If she is in the robotics club next year, I will probably make the bumpers again for the machine. I will make sure that I stream the entire process of how I do those bumpers and not just the first day of doing them. Now that I know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. In fact, I think I'm going to rewrite their instructions because they were so confusing. So I may just completely rewrite the instructions and give those to Robotics Canada because the as her teacher said, the person that wrote those instructions is a either an engineer or a mechanic or somebody in the school district. They're not a sewer. And he said he did it the previous year. And he just kind of try to figure out how to do it himself. He didn't really follow the directions. So Monday, I am going to make that cake. So for anyone watching, if you weren't watching the other day when I was talking about um, Jordan's ringette competition, she's going to be in the ringette for her end of the year tournament next weekend. And my husband bought one of those T-Rex costumes, you know, the blow up and they have the little arms in order to wear and chant and cheer. So I am going to make him a cape that has the London Lynx, which is her team, written onto the back. So I'm going to go shopping for all the materials tomorrow and I will stream making the cape on Monday. I swear I work faster whenever people are writing in chat and I'm talking. See, and I made a mistake earlier that I found and corrected. And I wasn't even taught, there was no one even in chat talking to me. So I make mistakes even on my own. Okay, there's those trimmed. Okay, last border. All right, so that's going to be 77. I may need another one. I do. Okay, I'm going to cut another purple. It's not my measurements. We're a little off. That's what I was afraid of. I didn't take into... Oh, just the um, the top, this top area here, I cut way too big, way, way too long, but it was something easy that I figured it out and fixed it. Whenever I started putting the borders on, I realized what I did. Thanks. And these are five and a half, correct? Yes.
think this is going to be long enough. We will see. Yeah, simple fixes are good. It was just a matter of I needed to have it 11 inches by 26 inches. And so I cut the 26 inches and I went to cut the 11 and I folded it in half. And because I folded it in half, I was supposed to divide by two and I didn't. I forgot to. So instead of 26 by 11, it was 26 by 22. So I just cut 11 inches off when I figured out the problem. But if I didn't double check and measure everything when I started putting the borders on, I would not have realized it and it would have been super long. <laughs> yeah, so I upstairs. She, um, her favorite pastime is sitting at our front window Barking at people and dogs that walk by. The other two dogs are like, eh, whatever. She was never barky until we stayed with my parents for a couple of weeks one time. And they have a bunch of dogs that all bark. So she has to be the one in charge and she has to be the loudest. And so that's when she started barking. together. <laughs> and you'd think my little chihuahua would be a barker. Yeah, he's not. Exactly. Ugh. And it's like, and it's not even when the other dog goes away, it's not like they revert back to not barking. It's like all of a sudden a switch is like turned on. And now they can't help but bark all the time. And it's annoying. They also wake me up. At 6.30 in the morning, every morning, no matter what time I want to actually sleep into, because they want their breakfast. And that's really annoying. Is exactly what they do. They say it's time to get up. I don't care if you want to get up, but you're getting up because it's time for food. So tomorrow, I was just thinking tomorrow's stream, I am going to work on the t-shirts. So I still have five more uh, pack of the t-shirt quilts that I've got to cut up because when I go pinning on Tuesday, 
I want to have them ready so I can lay them out for possible uh, arrangements for the lady that has commissioned them. And then Monday is Cape. Tuesday. I haven't put it up yet, but I'm going to stream on Tuesday probably. Um, I don't know what I'm going to work on yet. I'm probably I'm going away for another week. Not this next week, but the following week. I'll be gone just during the week. So I may want to quilt before I go or I may want to quilt after I go. I haven't decided yet. Trash. I don't need this anymore. Okay, left and right. Last border. Let's see. This is long enough for if I need to add more fabric. Oops. I just realized I tossed the fabric at the camera. Nope, it's long enough. Fantastic. Oh, before I forget, on my social media on Monday, um, I didn't reach the 2,000 mark for likes for my Facebook page, so I'm, I can't do the giveaway that I said I would do if I reached that point, but I almost hit 1750. So instead of doing a giveaway for the needles and the entire line of patterns, I'm going to do a giveaway for one pattern and have it the pattern of the person's choice who wins. So Monday morning, I'll put that out there and I'll probably pick Wednesday. No, I'll pick Tuesday. I'll leave it open for a day. Well, maybe, no, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. I don't know. So I'm trying to decide. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll probably do a video tomorrow and do it tomorrow. Yeah, it was close. And that's why I'm like, you know, I want to kind of do something because it did get close. So... Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do the giveaway tomorrow and leave it up until Tuesday and then give it away actually on Tuesday. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. Either which pattern you would want. Oh, what about which pattern do you want to see? That'll give me some ideas.
Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I like that idea. Okay, I'll put that up tomorrow. I'll probably do a, a video, Facebook video. be able to work on some of the Final Fantasy stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do the giveaway through Twitch. I'll probably do it through the Facebook. Because the initial thing was for, although you're right, I really should do a giveaway through Twitch. Although, it may not be as as good because the problem with doing a giveaway through Twitch is that if you put that in the title, people will show up, but they won't stay. So they'll stay for like just, you know, for that two or three minutes and then go away again. By putting it on Facebook, if I do a video tomorrow, and leave it up until Tuesday, I'll actually give it more time and more people can have a chance to see it and then comment on it. Yes. It's funny, I had, um, I think it was my second stream I did. I had my first troll. That was when I had to... Um, edit the profanity filters in the chat. And put some rules on chat. But that's how we learn, right? if I do it on Facebook, it'll be people that already liked my page or people that want to like the page. And then that way I know a fan is someone that'll win. All right. <sighs> One more set of borders. So Thursday, oh, because um, you came late into my stream today. Thursday, I never was able to stream because I couldn't get OBS to work. So 
same issue that was happening on Monday was happening Thursday. So finally, we figured out what the problem was. Windows had an update. And when they had an update, the drivers for my cameras changed. It was my cameras that were the problem. The moment that something... <laughs> Oh, did you try typing something and it didn't work and you put a space and then it worked? <laughs> so the moment that something was trying to access the cameras, it would crash. So it took us all night Thursday to figure it out, but we get have it all figured out. So we've got the the lag figured out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still laughing at that. <laughs> we've got the lag figured out. We've got the um, the cameras figured out. Oh, I thought you were trying to test out my profanity filter. <laughs> but yes, no, that's what, although in this case, it was, uh, he was commenting on other things. It's funny because Jordan was telling me, she said, uh, when I first started streaming, she said, oh, are you going to be a jiggler? What's a jiggler? And she said, Oh, you know, those girls that, that wear the, they have big boobs and have the super low cut. And, and I'm like, okay. She goes, yeah. And so they're always bending over when they're making things so that their boobs are in the camera. I said, okay. She said, so they're jigglers because a lot of people tune in just to see them jiggle. I'm like, okay. Yeah, the things that the young people have terms for, right? I'm like, no, no, not going to be a jiggler. Hopefully people that tune in to see what I'm doing actually want to see what I'm making. Oh, is that what you get? The cam girls? See, I like that term better, the cam girls. All right, I am almost done. Oh. All right, let me trim these up. We will add the last set of orders. Now, it's gonna be really hard to show you the finished quilt whenever it's done because this is a double-sized quilt but I will do my best of course after I have it quilted and bound I will put a picture up on my social media and on my website the more I look at that center logo I'm really happy with how it turned out with the changes that I made to it I think if I would have left it the other way, I wouldn't have been very happy with myself. Oh, no, that's right. I can't put it on my website. I can put it on my social media, but I can't put it on my website because of the logo, because it's a trademark. Stay there, cat. All right. You can go up there. Yeah, see? It is each individual's prerogative, what they want to do and what they want to show and how they want to act. They just can't, I just feel that when people do that, you can't get upset if someone then sexualizes you and that's all they look at.
when I taught, I taught a class this past Wednesday to a bunch of kids on the cinch tax. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing at the name. And then um, I was talking to some of the kids and I was telling them that, you know, I stream on Twitch and, and I was really surprised. Now these are 10 to 13 year olds. I was really surprised that a lot of them didn't know what Twitch was, but they liked video games and played video games. So, and the parents were there as well. So I told them what it was. And then afterwards I pulled aside the parents and I said, just make sure if they watch Twitch at all, that you know the streams that they are watching because there are some inappropriate comments and inappropriate things sometimes for a 10 to 13 year old. Nah, I don't mind that. I like watching some of, you know, some of the video game stuff that uh, gets inappropriate sometimes. Okay, any set that's getting too big. I'm gonna set these over here. Yeah, you know what? And that's fine. And that's that's the thing. Is that it's as long as they, um, if they're fine with it, if that's the image that they want to portray, if they're fine with it, then you know what? More power to them. I had, there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm almost done with this quilt. And I'm finishing it a little bit ahead of schedule, which is amazing because I have so much to do. So I will take a picture whenever I pin this on Tuesday, send it to Vinny and ask him what color he wants the quilting. Still can't decide between if I want to go purple with it or if I want to go silver. The light purple may look nice. Okay, scissors. Right.
last two bits of sewing. Yeah, you'll notice whenever I'm using the sewing machine, I like to try to have my hair up. It always sheds and it goes into the sewing. I don't think people want my hair and their stuff. All right. Now, whenever this goes back in front of the camera, you'll see like little threads poking out of the seams. That is perfectly natural and perfectly fine. I tell people all the time when they buy the quilts, I give them my quilt spiel, where I tell them that the, all these little threads are going to start poking through, especially the first time that they wash it. And you can rip them, pull them, trim them. It's just the little threads that have been, been caught in the seams coming through. But of course, if any of the actual quilting comes loose, and you can always see that from the back of the quilt, then that means I have done something wrong. And if it happens, it'll happen within a year and I would pay to have them ship me the quilts, fix it, and ship it back to them. It has never happened, but of course, handmade, you never know. All 
boss. Okay, this is all iron. Get my straight edge and a rotary cutter. I think it's okay. All right, so you can see easily the three colors, and this is done. So again, it's not going to uh, be easy to show you the entire thing because it's a devil. So I'm gonna do that, and then that, and then the bottom. So quilt is done. Yes, I know, Cat. Fantastic. All right, so let's fold this up, set it aside so I can pin it to the backing on Tuesday. All right, that's all the stuff I'm pinning. All right, now, Final Fantasy stuff. Because I have time. I've got, yeah, 15 minutes. Fantastic. It's enough time to do this. So these are panels. So he wanted um, the people from the game. He wanted the actual photos and screenshots from the game put onto the quilt. So how I'm doing it is I had a lady who makes the um, uh, professional photo quilt panels print them for me. Yeah, I need the long one. So these are actually printed by a professional using methods that they print regular fabric. Pretty cool, huh? Here's the first one. Oops. Not enough. There we go. Now it took a while to get in, and it was a pretty penny, but it's worth it. I'm watching the stream. Oh, that's actually turned out pretty good. You can actually see it. That's fantastic. So when I get the entire quilt finished, I'll put the picture up online. All right, so there's the first one. Thank you very much. Oops. It is almost time for me to change my rotary blade. I've been procrastinating it.
it's easier to iron and trim them when they're separated. So I don't think I've explained it. What I'm doing for each picture, I'm trimming it down so it has a quarter inch seam around the entire picture. <coughs> so I'm just taking my picture and I'm finding the quarter inch seam and then trimming. This is another one that I cannot put on my website, but I'll put on my social media. And it's also another one oops, that I could never make and sell at conventions or have for sale online. Oh, that's awesome. How does she do her giveaways on Facebook or... Oh, that's cool. That's a great idea. Because not only does it drive business to the social media, but it drives business to her website as well. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Not great. It's making sure that I have enough. I have all of them. I love, so whenever I get, this is also the same lady I get my photo, my photos from when I do photo quilts. She is, um, she does a really, really good job with leaving lots of space between the actual pictures to make sure that you have plenty of space for the seams. And that is super important. Some of the panels and some of the other pictures I get hardly leave any space and it's hard to actually separate them and so and have it still look nice. I like the idea of having a bot do it. I, uh, for my giveaways, I always, um, I t I've been taking the time to put everyone's name that does what they're supposed to into a spreadsheet and assign them a number. And then I use the random number generator to pick the winner. I've been looking into software that would pick winners for me though. They would keep track of it. That 
way I'm not doing a whole bunch of extra work. All I'm doing is giving something away. No, I did not um, Sundrasa. These were printed by a late. These were. Um, this is a lady that does for a living. She does um, prints of photos onto fabric. So this was digitally created with the same method that professional fabric is created. So it's a lot more expensive than spoon flower. But as you can see, because sometimes spoon, on spoon flower the blacks are not as um, saturated. You can see here how nice this black is. So it's a little bit more expensive method, but totally worth it. So these are, it's just meant for photo quilts. So she doesn't print anything else except for photos. And screenshots could be considered photos. It's also the same lady that I use for my actual photo quilts. So when someone commissions a photo quilt from me, I have her do all the pictures. back home. Or maybe not. Maybe the two other dogs were playing and she didn't like them playing. Oh, hi. Nope, I guess no one's here. Or else she wouldn't have come downstairs. Are, oh, are you tattling on them? Were they playing? Or do you just want to be on camera again? All right, come here. So, like, sit pretty. Yes, you're very cute. Someone told me one time that I should uh, get a third camera. And I should have the cat dog camera and have it on one of the cats or the dogs at all times. I actually like streaming on Twitch a lot, Sandrasa. It is, um, it's really cool. It is really nice to be able to interact directly with people as I'm sewing. And I also, as I was said to Amber earlier, I find it that I actually move a little bit faster when I'm making something if I'm talking. So if someone's in chat talking to me, I find I actually move faster. And I can stream for three to four hours without needing to take a break. If I wasn't streaming, a lot of times I take a break every hour or so, so I get a lot more done too. I also have been uploading, although I apologize, I haven't uploaded Tuesdays or Wednesdays yet. I, the next day I upload all the videos to YouTube so this way, if someone wanted to see a technique or someone's commissioned a quilt from me and they want to actually watch it and they haven't, weren't able to watch it live, they can tune into the YouTube and watch the Twitch streams the next day. And since most of my quilts are video games, it is a natural fit for me. Yeah, no, seriously, I, uh, it's not even a distraction. It is, like, I have the TV on, 
And sometimes I'll find myself going, and I stop what I'm doing, I'm watching the, t the, the TV, and I'm like, stop, you're not watching. Or I'll go down the, um, I'll go down the Twitter hole, or I'll, <laughs> or the, um, the Pinterest hole, where, you know, I'll look at something, and all of a sudden, here I am now on the computer for an hour instead of actually working on something. So, Twitch keeps me on task. really like this one. Just the picture's cool. And last one, and after I finish this, I am done for the day. So I got my GameCube quilt done. I got my Final Fantasy pieces cut out. I have been pretty productive today. So again, tomorrow I'm going to stream same time, 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'm only going to be working on t-shirt quilts. So I've got those seven t-shirt quilts on my commission list that I've got to work on. So I'm going to work on those tomorrow. Um, so I've got them all in bags. So I'm going to pull the bags open. I'm going to cut them out. I'll work on getting them squared up and ready to go because Tuesday I'm pinning. I'm heading to the family center to do all my pinning. So I need to have them all cut out and ready to go so I can have decide on layouts to then send to the lady that has commissioned them. So then Monday's the cape, T-Rex cape. That'll be fun. So I'm going shopping for that tomorrow. Uh, I think that's it. So tomorrow I'm doing a giveaway on Facebook for one of my patterns. So tune into that. And other than that, thanks for tuning in today. So I am done for the day. I'm going to go eat some dinner. And I will be back tomorrow at um, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you can swing by, swing by and chat with me. So, um, oh yeah, that is Glee. Um, chat with me so I'm productive and stuff goes fast. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I will see you tomorrow.